Cool. Marwan, great to see you. Uh, first of all, uh, how are you? How, how's how's your how's your workload going at present? Yeah, really good. Thanks. It's uh, it's a busy time, kind of uh, in at the club and also um, in the other place I work in the NHS. Um, as we start to kind of introduce face to face work and getting back to kind of work, and as a nation uh, is all doing the same, we're kind of facing the same same challenges. It's over three months since since we last spoke at the start of the of the lockdown. Uh, over that period, uh, how, how have you seen the the whole situation progressing? Yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it? I think the there's um, rightfully so. You know, the government has been cautious. Um, rugby league, the RFL has been you know cautious to kind of stop games, stop training, as obviously this is a, a new virus. We don't understand much about it and. There was a lot of worry to begin with. I think you know we're certainly in a, in a much better place as a country uh, in terms of past you know, past the peak, and and um, we, we're starting to kind of reintroduce, kind of trying to get back to some sort of normality. Um, and obviously, with that comes preparation and uh, and caution. But uh, but I'm optimistic that that we're doing the right thing. I know you've been working closely with the director of operations, Sue Ward, about the stadium and the training ground. Uh, has it, have you had to really start from scratch and go through every step that a player will, will, and staff will take on a, on a, on a day-to-day basis? Yeah, so the RFL have been uh, have given clear advice and guidance about um, how we have to have the training ground prepped, the stadium, how it needs to be um, with regards to things like PPE, so personal protective equipment, um, make, you know, making the, the, um, the venue and the training ground as, as safe as possible. Um, there's obviously no way of eliminating um, a virus uh, in terms of from an infection point of view, but um, we've been given really clear guidance about how we can set up the facilities to make sure they're as safe as possible. Um, so we've been through that myself, Sue, um, and the other um, a lot of members of staff um, at, at Leeds um, have been going through, you know, step by step with a fine tooth comb every single bit um, of the training ground and of the stadium to make sure that. It's um, it's the, the the best environment possible for um, for the players and staff. And in terms of obviously seeing Premier League football come back, the, the rugby league over in Australia, have, have you been able to to draw on any best practice from from those guys? Yeah, I think that's I think that's been perhaps one of the the one of the tactics is to see how things unfold with football and with um, with rugby over in Australia to see you know how. Their measures have been put into place, and and potentially learn from any um, any challenges that they face. So, yeah, there's been you know the 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 sports world has has kind of rallied together, and there's lots of lots of different people have got together to form different consensus statements about how things should run. Um, so it's, it, okay, we're in a fortunate position in rugby league in that um, you know football in the UK football were the first really major sport to to get back to it. So they they would have faced a lot of the uncertainty. Whereas we 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 can see how football have been doing it, so um, a lot of the things that have been in development to help support players and staff uh, in returning to to the training ground, um, we're almost piggybacking on from a rugby point of view. Some of it, which is good, um, some of it is obviously bespoke to rugby league, um, but ultimately it's the same thing. Whether whether people are going back to the workplace, the office, um, or the training ground, a lot of the issues are ultimately the same. But we just need to be a, Specific with how we treat them and manage them in uh, it would be in in, in at rhinos. And clearly, there's going to need to be a, a need for testing with the squad as well. That, that testing protocol is that something we're we're looking to put in place? Yeah. So there's um, there's two types of tests for coronavirus. There's the antigen test and the antibody test. The antigen test is the test that of have I got it now? So if you have symptoms. And you have an antigen test, then if you have antigens in your body um, to the virus uh, from the virus, um, then you've got the, the the virus right now. The antibody test is the is the have I got it test, uh, have I had it test. So um, any any illness or virus or infection you get, the antibody produces um, the, the body produces antibodies to it, and they can sometimes take days or weeks to show up in the bloodstream. Um, those are two main types of tests that are going on throughout the UK at the moment, NHS staff are having antibody testing. So have I had it testing? Um, but that's not having any impact on 
whether they need to return to work or can return to work and doesn't doesn't change anything at the moment whether if you've had the virus we don't know um whether that gives you immunity um or it makes any difference so it's not changing how it's be it's affecting the workplace so the the rugby football league is taking the decision um to do antigen testing which we'll be doing um weekly um to test all the players and staff um to see if they have the virus um in the days leading up to a game and presumably as well as obviously the testing around coronavirus the players gonna have to be monitored carefully medical wise this is something that's been unknown this this period where they've been away from training to then have a period of two to three weeks before they have to start playing again there's there's presumably a, a clear medical onus on that as well yeah i think there's two main bits there's the there's the um coronavirus medical part of this and there's the also the actual just business as usual bread and butter medical which is injuries and Ill, an illness and general illness away from coronavirus um with regards to coronavirus testing um and medical issues um the club's uh, uh is is um is bearing no expense to make sure that we do it right um that we monitor the players um and we've invested in a lot of technology to be able to do that um and if we do have any positive or any any issues with any of the players then we're in the best place to deal with it um from a, from a more from a wider point of view um obviously the players have been um although they've been keeping fit and, and we, our sports science teams and departments have been looking after them to make sure they can do bespoke home workouts and utilize facilities that are near them that they've not been playing any rugby for the past three months so there's definite um you know i think all rugby teams across the uk and all sports teams will be concerned about injury risk um in this time um kind of with a three-week period of um of, of return to training then back to kind of competition and um, so that's something that we're well aware of uh, and and we're taking the best steps we can to try and mitigate it and presumably there's an education element too because it's okay having the bubble and, and the surfaces within the training ground and stadium but the guys then obviously go home to their families and and everything else but is there is there an education process with that with the players as well absolutely yeah yeah we're kind of um we're, we're we're trying our best to educate the players as best we can um and making sure they know what what they should do from a point of view of seeking advice where to get help um and sticking to the measures which are still just as important now as they all they have been from the beginning of lockdown which is to do with you know hand hygiene and um, social distancing as best as you can and if you get symptoms when to report them and how and how to deal with them from a, from a professional point of view from your your experience I mean, is how, how much of a, a challenge has, has this period been yeah it's been tough it's completely changed obviously a lot of it's been um you know unknowns it's all been very new um you know the evidence is changing because it's something new that we're kind of trying to understand um with this shift from you know to pretty much almost exclusive home working for the majority of uh, uh, people who work in the uk um that's given challenges um you know physical and mental challenges for for, for people um i think that the um I think we've probably you know, we're, we're I definitely feel we're past the worst of it. Um, and although there's talks about concerns about second waves and things, I think ultimately you know that's within our gift um, to, to to act sensibly and uh, and try and you know bear in mind some of the me me messages that have been given in terms of being sensible with reintroducing kind of getting back into society. But it's definitely been a challenging time. I think you know from my point of view, um, as I say, I work in the NHS, uh, and that that's been I've been busy from a clinical and a, and a management point of view, putting these things in place. Um, and uh, and but ultimately, I'm glad we're in a position now where, and I'm sure the players are definitely glad um, to be get back, you know, getting back onto the field and and doing what they love. And the, um, there will be some who who will need that reassurance that every every precaution has been taken, you know, because obviously coming out of there, these bubbles within their families they've been in for so long to to come back to train and, and begin to open up again. Yeah, and that's really important. I think we, you know, the as I said, the the a lot of the focus has been on, you know, physical health in terms of the virus, social distancing, etc. But the 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 mental health impact of this is not to be underestimated. Um, the fact that you know, people, players included, but also the wider public have been, um, you know, 
at home in confined environments, um, not doing what they normally do. So routines have been completely disrupted, and new routines have have, um, have been have started. Um, so absolutely, there's a you know there's understanding that there there, there may well be anxieties about getting back, you know, about infection risk. Um, and we're do, taking all the steps to try to mitigate those things um, to support our players' well-being, mental health, and also just communicate with them that we're doing everything that we should be doing um, so they have the the confidence to, to to come back. But as I say, on the whole, um, the players are and the players are, uh, are really keen. They can't they you know from certainly the you know from um, the conversations I've had with lots of players, they they can't wait to get back. You know, so so I think there's definitely a, a positive mood, and I think. Getting back to training, starting games again, I think it will just lift the mood of the rugby league community.